it just so happens that these letters survive today. In the ancient records, letters that are common, letters that are not between elite people don't usually survive, but we do have the letters of Paul today and they've become incredibly important in Western culture. When I was a child, I lived in Lebanon. We were evacuated from Beirut during the Civil War. So I knew from a very young age that religion and violence and archeology span were somehow intertwined. When we moved um, to Atlanta, my parents put me into a private school, into a Southern Baptist school, where I learned that the Bible was deeply, deeply important in people's lives. Being a child with those two sets of circumstances, that religion could be very dangerous and very powerful politically, and that religion could be very powerful personally, um, led me to want to study the New Testament in particular, the Bible in general. One of the things that I'm hoping you'll get out of this course, one of the things that I try to do for my students on campus at Harvard, is to actually take them to the ancient world. Not because the ancient world will answer all of our questions about what the letters of Paul mean. In the experience of trying to go back in time, in the experience of trying to enter into the Mediterranean world, our imaginations are kind of set off. We see the ruins of an ancient temple and we think, oh my goodness, worship in the ancient world might have looked very different from worship in the present. Why do the letters of Paul still matter today when they were written literally millennia ago? They're in part of a set of texts today that really defines people's stances on moral issues. What about abortion? What about gay rights? What about women in leadership in religious communities? These letters that were penned centuries ago still have a power today. Mm -hmm.